Raquel. Good evening. I am just going to wait uh, some two more minutes and then uh, we'll get started, okay? Boa noite a todos. So guys, uh, I believe we should start on time, right? Um, and great. Uh, so today uh, we're going to be talking about criminal law, right? Um, and I will start off with a question to all of you. Uh, first, uh, a little bit of vocabulary as usual. So criminal law. Criminal law, direito penal. Uh, and uh, we are going to be talking about crimes uh, and uh, the verb that goes along with crime. Uh, the collocation is to commit a crime, to commit a crime. Uh, two other words that we need for my question. The first one, the verb to entice, entice or to lure, uh, it means to attract, atrair, seduzir, uh, and uh, the quality is uh, enticing, enticing, uh, atraente, tentador. So, I used to have a professor uh, in uh, law school who used to say that you fall in love with criminal law, but you marry civil law. And I wanted to ask you if that happened to you. Uh, were you lured, were you enticed by a uh, criminal law and then you decided to go the civil law way or are you uh, still practicing or studying civil law? Um, do you find it interesting, challenging? And uh, most importantly for today's class maybe, uh, do you find criminal law to be more enticing even if you don't practice criminal law? Uh, do you find it more interesting than civil law? Uh, do you think it might, you know, people might be more attracted uh, to criminal law because it deals uh, with freedom or maybe because of the movies, the series? Um, too bad we can't chat in this format. I, I'm always very, very uh, curious to know the opinion of my students and my colleagues colleagues, my fellow uh, lawyers. And this actually ties, uh, uh, can be tied to what we saw in relation to, um, you know, uh, lawyers in, in, in the UK, courtroom drama and barristers in their robes and wigs. Anyhow, let's move on. Let's begin with, uh, let's take a look meaning to take a look at 
Let's take a look at, to take a look at means to examine. Let's examine the definition of the word crime. So, crime is an act committed, committed or omitted in violation of public law, public law, either forbidding or commanding it. Another term for crime is offense, offense. And um, you can see on the screen, we have two spellings for offense, an American spelling and a British spelling or a UK spelling, I should say. So in the U US, you spell it with an S and in the UK with a C. Um, so the following classification relates to the seriousness of the offense. Uh, the categorization of the criminal act itself can vary across jurisdictions. So it can vary in the, in the United States, it can vary uh, depending on the state, right? And also obviously uh, the classification of uh, whether an act uh, falls under a certain type of crime will vary whether you are in Brazil or in the US as we are going to see. In, uh, in, in Brazil, for example, some things we classify as uh, a crime in the US is a tort, is a civil wrong. Um ilícito civil. Okay, so the first two words uh, to categorize crime, you have felony, 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 crime, or misdemeanor, misdemeanor. Contravenção penal. Uh, and here we see that uh, prefix, miss. When you see this prefix, it's usually saying that something is a miss, something is uh, wrong. You know, uh, it, the, the, uh, it shows you that uh, an infraction or a violation has been uh, committed. So misdemeanor, contravenção penal. Continuing with our vocabulary, uh, the next word, jail, jail, which means cadeia. Uh, prison term, prison term or prison sentence. And notice that the word sentence is in red. It's because it's a false friend. É um falso cognato, tá? Sentence. Não quer dizer o que soa. Sentence quer dizer pena. Pena, sentence. And prison sentence, uma, uma pena privativa de liberdade. Ou uma pena de prisão. Então, prison term, you, as you can see, it's very misleading. Very misleading. And here again, we have the, the prefix miss, very misleading. Um, it leads you to the wrong conclusion. Uh, prison term, pena privativa de liberdade. And prison sentence, uh, pena. Perdão, pena de prisão. Uh, and here we see again a word that we've been talking about a lot because we are studying common law. Statute. Statute. Lei promulgada pelo poder legislativo. And I'm sorry, I forgot to put it in red. It should be in red. A palavra statute deveria estar em vermelho, né? Porque os falsos cognatos eu estou sempre colocando em vermelho. Statute, lei promulgada pelo poder legislativo. It's not what it sounds. It is lei promulgada pelo poder legislativo. And then again, the prefix, miss, misconduct. Má conduta, infração, ato ilícito, desvio de conduta. It will depend uh, on the context, right? So what is a misdemeanor? Ah, então, misdemeanor é o quê? Contravenção penal, right? And again, we have to remember that we are talking about different legal systems and we are talking about things that are roughly equivalent. They are not exactly alike. We always have to keep in mind. Uh, we have to keep this in mind uh, when studying different legal systems, when dealing with translation, and when we compound translating different concepts from different legal systems, then uh, we have to understand that we are talking about uh, approximation. Okay, 
a misdemeanor is a type of a criminal of criminal offense that is not as serious as a felony offense. Felony é crime. E a palavra felon, F-E-L-O-N, alguém que já foi condenado por um crime. But what is a misdemeanor can vary slightly by state. Slightly, levemente. Generally, any crimes with a maximum penalty of a year or less in prison are considered misdemeanor offenses. However, in some states, longer jail terms could apply. And here, I believe this definition, even though it was written by a lawyer, is a little bit atechnical because it should be prison term. Jail, it's cadeia, usually where, where you stay uh, on a temporary basis, right? Uh, while you wait uh, for trial. So it should be prison terms. Uh, the statute defining a particular type of misconduct classifies the offense as a misdemeanor. Okay, let's continue. So we've spoken about um, misdemeanors, contravenções, and felonies, crimes. So now, how would we say ato infracional? And let's not even get into the, the topic of how juveniles are treated in the US because it varies a lot, significantly across jurisdictions. Uh, but uh, let's just try to find a term to uh, convey ato infracional. So delinquent act, delinquent, Act, uh, juvenile delinquency, juvenile offense. Um, I often come across juvenile offense, uh, but the uh, Department of Justice, which is similar to our uh, Ministério da Justiça, uh, uses the term delinquent act. Uh, and then you have juvenile court, Juvenile Court, Vara da Infância e Juventude, where, uh, and then the word prosecuted, processado, and jurisdiction, competência. Uh, jurisdiction usually means competência. Um, and here I would like to uh, take a, a little time to uh, speak about the pronunciation. So, you can pronounce it as jurisdiction, jurisdiction. That's uh, very colloquial in American English. So jurisdiction or jurisdiction. If you look at the, uh, the spelling or the, the transcription, uh, the phonetic transcription given in dictionaries, it's going to be like the ju jurisdiction. However, daily, spoken American English, people tend to pronounce it more as jurisdiction, jurisdiction. Okay, so a delinquent act, an act commi committed by a juvenile, juvenile, menor, for which an adult could be prosecuted in a criminal court. But when committed by a juvenile is within the jurisdiction of the juvenile court, Jurisdiction of the juvenile court, jurisdiction of the juvenile court, competência da vara da infância e juventude. Competência da vara da infância e juventude. Delinquent acts include crimes against persons, crimes against property, drug offenses, and crimes against public order when juveniles commit such acts. And here, as usual, I always try to bring you uh, interesting websites. So here you have the website of the Department of Justice, uh, the Office of Justice Programs. So you can click on it later and you can explore um, the Justice Department. Okay, so now we are going to talk about charge, which is a generic term and includes information 
and indictment. Então, charge é gênero, information and indictment, espécie. And we have a lot to talk about, uh, including the pronunciation of these words. Let's take it one step at a time. So, first step, the verb, to charge, charge, acusar, imputar, denunciar. As you can see, genérico, acusar, imputar, denunciar, to charge. You charge someone with, you charge someone with a crime, or you bring charges against someone. Imputar um crime a alguém, a, a, a acusar alguém de praticar um crime. And uh, one person who can bring charges, then you see it's one person because um, uh, who we'll, we'll examine uh, who brings charges uh, in, in, in an indictment. Uh, but the prosecutor, prosecutor, promotor ou procurador. And then uh, uh, a title, district, attorney, uh, prosecutor, uh, state's attorney, promotor de justiça. Tem um errinho ali, é só prosecutor or state's attorney. Promotor de justiça. Uh, the district attorney's office equivale ao Ministério Público Estadual. Entretanto, integra o Poder Executivo Estadual. That is because o Ministério Público in the U.S. is not an independent institution as our uh, Ministério Público. Uh, it is the Department of... Uh, the MPF would be the Department of Justice. Uh, so... Uh, there is no clear division as we have here uh, between the executive branch, the executive branch. Recall, do you recall that we uh, analyzed the branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial? Uh, and then in Brazil, we have Ministerio Publico separately, right? Uh, well, not in, the, not in the United States. In the United States, uh, the functions performed by the uh, Ministério Público are fall under uh, under the um, the Department of Justice. So here we go. Uh, why prosecutors took days to charge Daniel Penny in Jordan Neely's 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 killing? So, uh, to charge, acusar. Uh, and uh, let's analyze the sentence, the headline. After the ruling that Jordan Neely's death on the subway train was a homicide, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office faced several choices. And what I would like to call your attention to here is uh, ruling. Um, ruling in this case means determinar. Uh, or a determinação, right? However, ruling also means something else in legal English. Sentença, right? Ruling or um, judgment, sentença. Mas aqui nessa frase específica, ruling quer dizer a determinação, né? Foi determinado, descobriu-se que, né? Determinou-se que. Okay, let's continue talking about a uh, charge. So charge, as we saw, is a generic term, uh, termo genérico, general term. It means denúncia, acusação, imputação de um crime. However, it uh, is divided into two categories, indictment, 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 uh, uh, just pay attention to the pronunciation. There is no K sound, no K, K. Indictment, indictment. Denúncia oferecida pelo grand jury. And e a gente vai ver o que, que é o grand jury, okay? So indictment, a denúncia oferecida pelo grand jury. Now, information, information é a denúncia oferecida pelo promotor. Information, a denúncia oferecida pelo promotor. Now, grand jury. 
Grand jury is a body of jurors that investigates crimes and decides whether to charge whether charges should be filed. But we'll go into more detail, okay, about the grand jury. So indictment, indictment, denúncia oferecida pelo grand jury. The grand jury brings or files the indictment. Now, some vocabulary. Amendment, emenda, emenda. To waive your right or to waive the right, renunciar ao direito. Grand jury, grand jury. So, uh, the body of jurors that investigates crimes and decides whether charges should be filed. And uh, a grand jury is required in all federal felonies. Então, crimes federais. Most states also adopt some form of grand jury. E como nos Estados Unidos, como a gente já viu em relação à estrutura do judiciário, que cada é, estado é, é responsável pelo seu próprio judiciário, e cria a sua própria a, a sua própria organização judiciária também a uh, in relation also in relation to criminal law okay so uh, the states decide whether they want to adopt a grand jury or not but most do uh, so uh, it is important to notice uh, to note that uh, at least for federal crimes, the individual under investigation can waive the right to a grand jury in case of a felony. So uh, let's examine this excerpt. Excerpt trecho. The Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, o que é então a Quinta Emenda à Constituição Americana, requires that the that in the federal system a felony prosecution begin with an indictment begin with an indictment to obtain an indictment a prosecutor must present proposed char charges to a grand jury so basically the prosecutor will approach the grand jury and um, present what he is charging the accused uh, of, to accuse someone of a crime. And it is the grand jury uh, who will decide whether uh, an indictment, a denuncia, should be uh, brought or filed. So the prosecutor does not decide. Who decides? The grand jury unless the offender waives his right to an indictment. And as we are going to see, this is also um, a major problem. I will use the word problem, a major issue, maybe issue is better, a major issue uh, within the American justice, justice system. But let's continue. Uh, let's continue examining uh, these concepts. So, the indictment. Uh, for an indictment to happen, you need probable cause, right? They, they need to uh, establish whether there is probable cause. Prova da materialidade e indício suficiente de autoria. And, uh, you know, they look at some of the evidence presented, evidence of proof. As duas palavras são traduzidas, tanto evidence quanto proof, podem ser traduzidas como prova e podem ser utilizadas é, uma ou outra, né? However, if you want to be more technical, uh, evidence é o meio probatório para provar um fato, and, and prova é o efeito. You analyze several pieces of evidence and then you have proof, right? So evidence, 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 evidence. Combined, they create or, you know, they establish a proof. You could say, you could, I believe you could put it like that. So 
Now, the grand jury is a group of people selected to sit on a jury that decide whether the prosecutor's evidence provides probable cause to issue an indictment. An, in, an indictment formally charges a person with committing a crime and begins the criminal prosecution process. So in the United States, a grand jury consists of 16 to 23 people or jurors. Uh, grand juries convene for a period of one month up to one year, they can be very long. The grand jury proceedings are held in private. The suspected criminal actor is usually not present at the proceedings. And here again, another very interesting website. Uh, it's, uh, it's a dictionary and it also goes, you know, in, in, in a little bit, it's, it goes in depth maybe in some uh, subjects. So here is the, uh, the link, and it is a, an initiative of Cornell University. Cornell is a very uh, well-established and very prominent university in the United States. It has a very good law school. Now, continuing with the indictment, and remember indictment, no case out, indictment, uh, subpoena, subpoena. Uh, even Americans, when they look at this word, they have a tough time pronouncing it. Supina, uh, supina, no be sound, no be sound. Intimação para testemunhar, tá? Para testemunhar or to present documents. Supina. Oh, twice. Oh, to supina. Uh, it's not intimação. Aqui, I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, é intimar e não intimação. To supina, intimar. I'm sorry for... Uh, my oversight, uh, to subpoena someone to do something, intimar alguém a fazer algo. Now, notice, notice or notice, uh, qualquer outra intimação, qualquer outra intimação, notice. Uh, to give notice or to notify, intimar. However, uh, to if you are uh, if you are being uh, required to to testify, then the the document is called a subpoena. Um, under oath, sob juramento, sob juramento, under oath, oath, under oath. So to give testimony under oath, testemunhar sob o compromisso de dizer a verdade. Sorry, guys, it's very hot here. So, testemunhar sobre o compromisso de dizer a verdade. So, a grand jury can subpoena documents and witnesses. For example, a prosecutor may request a grand jury to issue subpoenas for certain documents or to force a person to appear to testify under oath. A grand jury does not determine guilt or innocence. No, they don't. What they are doing, they are trying to see if the uh, person being investigated should be charged or not, if charges should be brought, if, uh, if a denuncia, right? Uh, if, if they should, uh, if that person should, should be charged, denuncia. Now, continuing with the word indictment, watch out. It can uh, lead you to the false conclusion uh, that it doesn't mean denúncia, but it does. Indictment is denúncia oferecida pelo grand jury. Não é a outra palavra aqui. Indiciamento é institution of a cr criminal investigation. Charges. Filing of charges, formal accusation, or, char or charge by law enforcement authorities. So be careful. Uh, charge aqui está sendo usado não como, não é, no sentido genérico, tá? E não no sentido específico que a palavra denun denúncia 
é, significa no português. So, law enforcement, atividade policial. If you watch CSI, all the time they talk about law enforcement, law enforcement. Uh, and law enforcement agent or law enforcement officer, autoridade policial. You know, they are kind of false friends, né? Eles, esses termos geram confusão para os brasileiros. Law enforcement, uh, autoridade policial. Uh, indiciado, if you have to translate indiciado, you should opt uh, for the term accused. Accused. And defendant, help. Okay, so charge is uh, a generic term. Indictment is one type of denuncia. And then you have information. Information. Information is denuncia oferecida pelo promotor. But we have seen that if we are talking about felony, crime, e não contravenção, crime, there is a constitutional amendment that gives... Uh, the accused or the person under investigation, the right to a grand jury. So the only way uh, a prosecutor, um promotor or procurador, can uh, present uh, information is if the, and that in the, uh, state, uh, in the state, uh, in, in most states as well, is if uh, the person being investigated waives his right or her right to a grand jury. So to file the information, oferecer a denúncia, to dismiss the information, rejeitar a denúncia, and now we come to a very interesting term, plea bargain. Plea bargain, transação penal. Uh, I know that during a uh, Operação Lava Jato, uh, we saw this word being used by the media uh, as uh, delação premiada. You know, it can be used, but it's not the most technical uh, way of, uh, you know, translating uh, transação a uh, delação premiada. We'll talk about, there is another term we are going to see that conveys uh, delação premiada. Uh, transação penal, plea bargain. And we are also going to see that transação penal uh, is very different in Brazil and in the US, okay? So, information. Before filing an information, federal prosecutors must establish Probable cause, probable cause. Uh, misdemeanor, uh, misdemeanor cases. In misdemeanor cases, federal prosecutors can file an information without going through a grand jury process. So if we are talking about a misdemeanor, the prosecutor can file the information. Uh, now, in case of a defendant's waiver, the defendant may choose to waive the right to be indicted by a grand jury. Uh, defendant, uh, normalmente é traduzido como réu, né? Um, I, I think that the most correct uh, word here should be uh, the accused. Um, let's continue. Uh, felony cases with defendant's consent. In some felony cases, even though a grand jury is typically required for felony, ch felony charges, federal prosecutors may file an information with the defendant's consent. This is often part of a plea agreement or negotiation between the prosecutor and the offense. Here, the prosecutor, prosecution, I'm sorry, a acusação or in our case, the Ministerio Public, and the, offense, the defense. Continuing on with information. So information, denúncia of, of, oferecida pelo promotor ou procurador, na verdade, né? Procurador. Uh, the prosecutor brings or files the information. 
like an indictment, an information is a formal charging document that describes the criminal charges against a person and the factual basis for those charges. Unlike an indictment, however, an information does not require a grand jury's vote. Instead, the information is presented to the judicial officer, usually a magistrate judge. Do you recall a magistrate judge is actually a judicial officer? He is not a, uh, within the federal system, he is not an Article Three judge, right? He is an assistant uh, who examines the information and decides whether there is probable cause that the crime occurred. Now, plea bargain and state's evidence. Uh, plea bargain and state's evidence. Plea bargain, transação penal. Ah, e atenção às hipóteses de transação penal são muito mais restritas no nosso ordenamento jurídico. Ah, state's evidence, delação premiada. To turn state's evidence, fazer uma delação premiada. But, you know, if you uh, remember, or if you... Even uh, in the United States, usually whenever they were uh, speaking about Operação Lava Jato, they would just use the term plea bargain. But it's not the most technical use of uh, legal terms. Okay. So, for example, uh, and by the way, Black's Law Dictionary é um dicionário referência, tá? É, no inglês jurídico, é, para os próprios americanos. So, after hours of intense negotiations, the suspect accepted a plea bargain and agreed to turn state's evidence. Então, this, uh, uh, o acusado, o investigado, aceitou fazer né, a transação penal e concordou em fazer uma delação premiada, to turn state's evidence. Oh, and here is a translation. Após horas de intensa negociação, o suspeito aceitou realizar transação penal e concordou em fazer a delação premiada. Now, uh, if you pay attention when you watch movies, you've, uh, you've often, or you've probably heard this expression, to plead guilty. Or to plead not guilty. To plead not guilty negar as acusações em juízo. O, a gente não usa, né? Assim, é, é, não é recomendável a, a tradução ao pé da letra, declarar-se é, declarar inocente, declarar-se culpado, né? Uh, and then to plead guilty, confessar em juízo. To plead guilty to a crime, confessar um crime em juízo. Uh, as I was talking about a plea bargain, transação penal, uh, uh, prosecutors in the U.S. have much more power to offer uh, plea bargains. And uh, many people believe it is a problem. Uh, and I'll just uh, refer you to an article by NPR. Uh, I really like N NPR. NPR is the National Public Radio. NPR, PBS, Public Broadcasts, uh, service, I believe, or system, and the, in the US, and then the BBC in London. Uh, you can really uh, rely on these um, companies uh, to provide you very interesting uh, articles about not only the law, but many other topics. So, the vast majority of criminal cases end in plea bargains a new report finds. A new report finds that the vast majority of criminal cases end in plea bargain. Plea bargain. So, transação penal. The American Bar Association, and we've seen the term, American Bar Association, roughly equivalent to OAB. 
says, and pay attention to the pronunciation of the verb to say, I say, you say, she says, he says. Uh, so the American Bar Association says the practice puts efficiency over fairness, ou seja, fairness, justiça. So it puts efficiency over fairness uh, and leads to innocent people being cursed, cursed, coagidos, to plead guilty. And any, now look at the statistics. Realmente incrível. In any given year, 98% of criminal cases in the federal courts end with a plea bargain. 98% of criminal cases in the federal courts end with a plea bargain. A practice that prizes efficiency, ou seja, é, que coloca, que dá um prêmio à eficiência, né? Over fairness and innocence, according to the new report from the American Bar Association. So, 98% of people accused uh, of having committed a criminal, a, a federal, uh, a federal crime or a criminal, a federal criminal offense, uh, will not go to to trial. They will um, accept some sort of plea bargain. So, continuing, a task force. Task force, task force, a uh, força tarefa that includes prosecutors, judges, defense attorneys, and academics cited substantial evidence that innocent people are coerced into guilty pleas because of the power prosecute prosecutors hold over them. To hold, I'm holding a pen right now. To hold. Uh, Segurar ou ter sobre eles, né? To hold, to hold over them. Including the prospect of decades-long mandatory minimum sentences. Again, sentences, penish. Okay? Trials have become rare legal artifacts in most U.S. jurisdictions and even non-existent in others. The... ABA Plea Bargain Task Force wrote in a report released, released, é, publicado, né? É, Wednesday. And the day of the week, Wednesday, no this sound. Wednesday. Wednesday. So the whole article is here. You, you would have to click on the link. Now, um, did you know about this? Uh, you know, I would be curious to to know what you think about uh, these um, statistics. Is it a good uh, idea to have 98% of people who are accused of a crime uh, agreeing to a plea bargain to, after, uh, you know, talking to a prosecutor, even if they can count on counsel, counsel, um advogado? You know, food for thought. There is an expression in English, food for thought. Uma sementinha aí para você pensar. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the term counts. Counts. Counts são as acusações, as imputações, cada um dos crimes que constam da denúncia, na denúncia. Seja no indictment ou na denúncia information. Now, uh, someone was found guilty, foi condenado. Witness, witness, testemunha. Witness, testemunha. And again, a gente vai sair da aula de hoje sabendo que sentence é pena. Sentence, pena. Sentence, pena. Okay. Now, uh, a, uh, just to demonstrate the word counts, or count, one count, two counts, ten counts. Uh, Sam Bankman Fried found guilty on all seven crimes, on all seven, sorry, criminal fraud counts. 
criminal fraud counts. So a jury has found Sam Beckman Fried guilty of all seven, seven criminal counts against him. Então, cada um, cada um dos, dos crimes que con, constam na denúncia, né? Counts. Uh, two other, uh, again, to talk a little bit more about evidence and proof, as we had, uh, we discussed it a little bit. I'm going to go back to it. Uh, the words evidence and proof may be used interchangeably. However, uh, proof é um meio probatório. Uh, sorry, proof é o efeito da evidência and, uh, of the evidence, I'm sorry, and evidence é o meio probatório. But I think I might have read this already, so I'm going to skip it. You can read it, uh, you can read it at home, and if you have any questions, you can ask me, because I do not want to be repetitive. Now let's take a look at this. Uh, some terms that are specific to criminal law and some terms that are specific to civil law, okay? So, uh, or some differences, right? The first term, uh, the defendant in a criminal law case, in a criminal case is found guilty or not guilty. So uh, a ruling or a judgment will determine that the defendant was found guilty or, or will state, I should say, that the defendant was found guilty or not guilty. Uh, now, if it is a civil case, the defendant is liable or not liable. And I'm actually, sorry, I'm just looking for my, to show you the, so guilty or not guilty, condenado ou absolvido, liable or not liable, responsável, responde, é, ou é obrigado a fazer ou não fazer, é not liable, não é responsável, não responde, não está civilmente obrigado. Uh, and... Uh, Obviously, guilty, né? a tradução literal de guilty, obviamente, é culpado, and not guilty, né? não, culpado. Uh, but again, we have to adapt the translations to our legal system. So going back to our little table. In civil cases, a defendant is uh, found liable or not liable. Criminal cases, guilty or not guilty. Now, the burden of proof, o ônus da prova, in a civil case, lies with the plaintiff. The plaintiff. O autor. O autor da ação. The plaintiff. Usually, right? Usually, in general. Let's not get too specific. Uh, generally, with the plaintiff. Uh, in a criminal case, the burden of proof lies with the prosecution, the prosecution, a uh, acusação, which can be called also the government, the state, the people. Uh, you might have seen in movies, the people of California versus John Doe. By the way, John Doe é o Zé das Couves, tá? John Doe é o Zé das Couves. Um, Standard of proof, uh, the standard is, uh, in, civil, in civil cases, preponderance of evidence, preponderance of evidence, and in criminal cases, beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's look at some of the, trans some translations for that. So, standard of proof, tipo de ônus da prova, Preponderance of evidence, evidence, verdade formal. Um, in civil cases, the plaintiff needs to prove that the defend, defendant is liable on the balance of probabilities. Uh, in civil cases, the, def, the plaintiff needs to prove that the defendant is liable on the balance of probabilities. 
Ou seja, plaintiff again. Plaintiff é quem? É o autor. The defendant é quem? É o réu. Né? Liable tem responsabilidade, é responsável. Uh, now, beyond a reasonable doubt, verdade real, prova da verdade real, sem possibilidade de dúvida razoável. So, and this re refers to criminal cases, right? So, guilt must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. Beyond, beyond a reasonable doubt. Ah, doubt também. Outra palavra que tem o B mudo. Doubt. Doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. A culpa deve ser provada plenamente no julgamento, sem deixar margem para a dúvida razoável. So, he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. A promotoria provou o quê? Ele é culpado sem possibilidade de dúvida razoável. Suggested translation, right? Uh, from the Marcílio Dictionary. Uh, if you have uh, other suggested translation, I would be curious to uh, read it. So, in criminal cases, if the prosecution fails, fails, falha, to prove, that the defendant is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, the verdict, verdict of not guilty is render. So you render a verdict. Uh, you render a ruling, you render a verdict. Burden of proof, onus da prova. Burden of proof, onus da prova. So, uh, continuing, uh, the defendant was found not guilty. O réu foi absolvido. The defendant was found guilty of a crime. You are guilty of a crime. Guilty of a crime. O réu foi condenado pelo crime de blá blá. Now, the jury found the defendant guilty. O júri condenou o réu. The jury found the defendant not guilty. O júri absolveu o réu. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the word sentence. Então, tá em vermelho, gente. Tá em vermelho por quê? Porque é um falso cognato. A false friend. Sentence means pena. So, to sentence someone é condenar, sentenciar, sempre no direito penal. E aí eu provo para você. Sentencing guidelines. Sentencing guideline, guidelines. Just a second. Perdão, gente, minha boca secou. Guidelines são diretrizes, né? Sentencing guidelines, diretrizes sobre a dosimetria da pena. A dosimetria da pena. Tá? Sentencing. Ou seja, sentence, pena. Sentencing tem a ver com a pena. Tá? To be convicted of a crime. Now we are talking about collocations, the prepositions that you need to use with a certain verb. So, you are convicted of a crime. Convicted of a crime. His neighbor was convicted of a crime. Uh, to be sentenced to... The serial killer was sentenced to life imprisonment. Life imprisonment. Imprisonment, prisão perpétua. Prisão perpétua. Perpétua, I'm sorry. His neighbor was sentenced to a prison term of two years. Sentenced to. Uh, and prison term, a... Uh, Pena privativa de liberdade, right? So, sentença. Oh, I, I had it twice, I'm sorry. Sentença, judgment, ruling. Essas duas palavras, tá? Uh, significam sentença. Judgment and ruling. Judgment and ruling. E aí eu vou... Uh, sentença uh, absolutória, judgment of acquittal. Judgment of acquittal. 
Tá vendo? Tô provando para vocês que sentença é judgment or rule. Judgment of acquittal. Acquittal, 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 absolvição. Acquittal, absolvição. Ok. Uh, two other important terms. And I'm sure you've seen that in movies. Um, his own parole, his own probation. Então, o que, que significa parole and probation? Uh, just one second. I'm going to check the chat. Aí vocês têm que perguntar para Esther. So, parole, livramento condicional. And let's pay attention to the preposition. You are on parole. Someone is on parole. To be on parole. After serving three years in prison, John was released and is now on parole. He must check in with his parole officer every other Wednesday. 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 So every other, every other. Every other quer dizer de duas em duas, uh, a cada duas quartas-feiras. Ou seja, every other day, dia sim, dia não. So every other week, uma semana sim, uma semana não. Every other day, o dia sim, dia não. So he must check in with his parole. To check in, quer dizer, ele tem que ir lá se apresentar. Uh, to his parole officer every other Wednesday. Uma, é, a cada duas segundas, se, é, quartas-feiras. Sorry. Quarta-feira. Probation. Suspensão condicional da pena or sur surci. Então, parole, parole, you are in and you can get out. Right? Então, parole, você estava preso e você pode, pode sair. Né? Macetinho. Probation, the opposite. You are not... Well, it's not the opposite. It's just that you are out and you want to continue to be out, so you better behave. Okay? You better be on your best behavior. So, probation, suspensão condicional da pena. To be on probation. E aqui, eu peguei um... Um, um artigo, né? Do, do jornal de Michigan... Dearborn Fire Chief, o bombeiro-chefe, Joseph Murray, avoided any jail time, but will spend one year on probation as part of his sentence for drunk driving arrest last year. Então, como parte da, da pena que ele recebeu por dirigir é embriagado. And he pleaded guilty. So, to plead guilty. So basically, that was the, the plea bargain. Essa foi a transação, transação penal. He pled guilty and, and he didn't have to go to jail. He got probation. Probation. Probation, suspensão condicional da pena. Okay, let's continue. Okay. I brought for us uh, four, uh, four, uh, 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 the four indictments that are being um, uh, pre uh, pressed against uh, uh, Donald, Donald Trump, Trump, President Trump, former President Trump, former President Trump. Uh, the four Trump criminal cases, strengths and weakness. An assessment, assessment, avaliação of the four indictments. So, a denúncia, a denúncia aqui foi apresentada por quem? É um indictment, pelo grand jury, right? Ou seja, houve um grand jury para cada um, para cá, para cada uma dessas denúncias against the former president, including notable features, strengths and weaknesses. E aqui está o link do artigo. O primeiro, bookkeeping fraud. Bookkeeping, bookkeeping, contabilidade. Tá? So, the venue, o foro. 
New York State Legal System. Vocês estão notando? New York State Legal System. Cada estado tem o seu próprio sistema jurídico. The Supreme Court of Manhattan. Now, quem estava aqui para a aula sobre a organização judiciária vai poder responder. A, a gente viu que cada estado tem também a sua Suprema Corte, né? a Suprema Corte Estadual. Aqui, esse caso está sendo analisado na Suprema Corte de Nova York? Supreme Court in Manhattan? Sim ou não? Não, é pegadinha. É, no estado de Nova York, Supreme Court é o nome da primeira instância. Primeira instância. Uh, Chief Prosecutor uh, Alvin Bragg, Manhattan District Attorney. Então, ele é o promotor estadual, né? Da, seria equivalente ao MP estadual. Uh, charges. Mr. Trump has been charged with 34 felony counts. So, felony, crime, né? Não é contravenção. Felony é um crime. E count, cada uma das, da, das acusações, cada crime que consta da denúncia. Então, é, what I would like you to see is that with what we studied today, you can really understand uh, the legal terms uh, of this article. Uh, Uh, so, 34 felony counts of falsifying business records related to a series of Trump Organization checks, né? falsificação de, de cheques, né? that he signed in 2017 to his personal lawyer and a fixer, Michael Cohen. A fixer é uma palavra assim, é aquela pessoa que desenrola a sua vida, digamos, né? Assim. Okay, so let's continue. I'm not going to read every single word, but hush money to hush. Hush é silenciar, né? O que você faz para a pessoa ficar calada. Hush, hush. Hush money é, um, é, um, é uma quantia que você paga para alguém não falar sobre algo, né? And then, uh, but according to the indictment, according to the indictment, a denúncia, internal documents falsely recorded the checks as payment for legal work. Mr. Cohen had pur purportedly performed in 2017 under a retainer. Retainer é o... É o é, o primeiro é o pagamento que o, o cliente faz ao advogado no começo da, é, ao contratar os serviços do advogado. So, the indictment happened, a denúncia foi apresentada em março, and the scheduled, scheduled trial, é, o, o julgamento está agendado para março. Now, the second, the second indictment is within the federal legal system. Uh, and the chief prosecutor, a acusação, ela é encabeçada pelo special counsel. Now, you've, you've probably seen that. A special counsel is appointed when, um, when because there is no separation between Uh, because the uh, functions of the Ministério Público uh, in the U.S. fall within the executive branch, the executive branch, when it is felt that there is a possibility of a conflict of interest, a special counsel is appointed in, you know, under, in uh, prominent cases. Então, justamente porque não há essa separação, né? esse Ministério Público completamente independente em casos é, muito controversos ou muito importantes, é, é, há a nomeação de um, de, um, de um agente chamado Special Counsel. 
Okay. So here, Trump has been charged with four, 40 criminal counts. Counts, outra vez, cada crime que consta da denúncia. Uh, the same thing here, we indictment for national security documents, we indictment, the indictment happened in June and the trial will happen in May. And um, the indictment cites an abundance of concrete evidence. Então aqui a gente vê Evidence, a prova como meio de, meio de, meio de prova, né? Meio de prova. The charges are not novel applications of laws. So, novel é algo inédito. Novel. Não, não, as acusações não são inéditas. But they, they raise untested issues. That raise untested issues, I'm sorry, but rather... Statutes. Aqui o que, que são statutes? Leis promulgadas pelo poder legislativo. That have been invoked in this, in this many times. E a última denúncia uh, happened in uh, the, the last uh, indictment happened in Georgia and relates to uh, the election. Uh, Fraud. And he is being accused of racketeering. Have you ever heard this term? Racketeering, racketeering, formação de quadrilha com o objetivo de praticar extorsão, constrangimento ilegal ou outros tipos de atividades ilegais. Uh, it can be translated as crime organizado ou formação de quadrilha. So he is being, he was indicted and is being charged. Uh, with uh, racketeering, racketeering, racketeering. A very serious accusation, right? Okay, I have one final document that I would like to discuss with you guys, which is, uh, at the beginning of class, I mentioned to you that... Uh, Legal English, well, when we're talking about legal English, we're not talking only about uh, translating from Portuguese into English, but we are also talking about comparing legal systems and, uh, and also learning about the different legal systems within the United States, right? But uh, I would like to bring, bring to your attention a major difference uh, regarding criminal law in Brazil and in the US. Uh, when we talk about crimes contra honra in Brazil, we are talking about criminal law, right? Uh, crimes contra honra, injúria, difamação, calúnia, right? And you have a defendant that is found guilty or not guilty. Now, in the United States, defamation is not a crime. It is a tort. Of course, depending on what you do, you can incur, you know, you can, you can commit a crime. But defamation in and of itself is a tort. And the way it's broken down is not according to injuria, difamação, the criteria we use for injuria, difamação, and calunia. No. The way they see it is whether it's written or whether it is uh, done verbally. Um, so if a someone, something is written uh, a, and is defamatory, you call it libel, libel, li libelous, libel. If words are spoken, or a song or uh, something that is spoken, uh, then you call it slander. But again, these are not crimes. These are torts. Responsabilidade civil extra contratual. Tá? So 
uh, defamation encompasses what would be classified in Brazil as injúria, defamação ou calúnia. Injúria, defamação ou calúnia. But it doesn't fall into the criminal sphere. In the US, it falls under the civil, uh, you know, under civil law. So the defendant in a civil lawsuit is found liable or not liable. And uh, in the US, to prove libel or slander, you just need the preponderance of evidence. Uh, but uh, in Brazil, you would, you would need beyond a reasonable, the, the burden of proof would be set at a level where you wouldn't have a reasonable doubt. So uh, let's look at some vocabulary. Burden of proof, onus da prova. Preponderance of evidence, verdade formal, beyond a reasonable doubt, verdade real. So I, uh, do you have any questions for me regarding, uh, regarding defamation? No, no questions? Oh, okay. I see here someone asking me if uh, indictment and indiciamento são sinônimos. Eu só não sei que horas a pessoa me perguntou isso. Não, indictment e indiciamento não são sinônimos. É, indictment é a denúncia que é apresentada pelo grand jury, porque há, há certos requerimentos, é, lei federal nos Estados Unidos, exige que, é, em caso de crime federal, a denúncia não, não seja apresentada diretamente pelo, é, pelo procurador, pelo que seria equivalente ao MP, que a, a denúncia tem que ser apresentada é, por um grand jury, o, ou seja, é, o promotor, o procurador apresenta... É, as acusações ao grand jury e o grand jury determina se há probable cause é, indícios de materialidade e autoria uh, para que a denúncia seja apresentada então indictment é denúncia indiciamento no Brasil acontece é, na esfera policial So they are different things. Já enviaram a lista de presença? This is a question for um, this is a question for Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Help me out here. Esther, exatamente. This is a question for Esther. <laughs> uh, By the way, my two biblical ladies, Esther and Raquel tonight. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, I could only think of Raquel just because I'm like, okay, it's a biblical name. <laughs> so guys, do you have any questions for me? I thought, you know, I, uh, I had brought you so much uh, vocabulary uh, and so many concepts that I was afraid to bring you more stuff. I didn't want it to get too boring. But if you have questions or, you know, uh, if you'd like to practice pronunciation, you can open your mic and uh, ask me. No questions? Obrigada, professora. Tudo certo. Então, so I guess today class was a little bit shorter. But uh, I mean, I'm glad to stay in chat. Uh, you know, we can, like, I'm glad to, you know, we could go to 7.30. Um, feel free. Or I could keep repeating here some of the more difficult words. Uh, one of the important things I would like you to leave today 
remembering is sentence, sentence é pena, sentença, ruling or judgment, sentença, ruling or judgment, sentence é pena. And then uh, you are guilty of a crime, to be guilty of a crime. You are accused of a crime, to be accused of a crime. Very good, very good. And then other things we need to remember, uh, indictment has a C, but that C is mute. Indictment, subpoena, 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 quando a testemunha é intimada, né? A pessoa é intimada a testemunhar, subpoena, também é uma palavra bem difícil de, de se soletrar, S-U-B-P-O-E-N-A, tem o B, mas o B também é mudo, just as in doubt, and uh, Wednesday, ah, não, aí é um D, né, gente, desculpa, não é um D, Wednesday. So, um, I guess uh, that's it for today, if... Uh, If you really don't have any other questions, uh, I think uh, we are done. We are done. For sure. Uh, let me just take one last look here to see if I, I need to... Um, I need to, oh, and then this is also important, right? Law enforcement, é atividade policial, tá? Atividade policial. Existe o enforcement, que é a fase da execução no processo, tá? A fase da execução do processo. É por isso que a gente não pode pegar, assim, uma palavra isoladamente. Agora, law enforcement são os policiais, é, os investigadores, são os profissionais, as autoridades policiais, law enforcement. That's it, people. Uh, if you don't have any more questions for me next class, we'll see, uh, we'll take a look at contracts. Okay? Oh, wait a minute, I just have two more messages here before I say bye. Poderia repetir o significado de supina? Sim, supina. Ah, não consegui anotar. Gente, vocês receberam, o... a, a Esther vai mandar para vocês esse documento, tá? Porque... É um documento bem completo, tirando uma outra duplicidade que eu vi aqui. Ele está bem completinho. E aí dá para você... Ah, já mandou. A Esther já mandou o, o documento para vocês. Então, subpoena é a intimação da testemunha, ou então a intimação para, é, para a exibição de documento, tá? Agora, uma intimação que não seja... É, requerendo a exibição de documento ou que uma ou então que uma testemunha compareça é, é, para né compareça em juízo para testemunhar com, sob o compromisso de dizer a verdade é uma qualquer outra intimação é notice notice e citação summons não está aqui mas é summons s u M M O N S summons to serve summons, né? Serve summons. Então, é, por isso que você vê nos filmes you've been served, né? Você foi citado, mas na verdade o oficial de justiça está fazendo o quê? Serving a summons, serving a summons. Então, tá nessa página. Ah, quem me perguntou, desculpa, eu já rolei aqui o o Sim, nos Estados Unidos existe uh, perjury. Yes, you are correct. Uh, and again, aqui a gente não está analisando os crimes em espécie, né? E, assim, é, tem muita variação também de estado para estado, né? E eu não sou professora de é, direito penal estadunidense, nem de direito penal brasileiro, na verdade. Mas, é, obviamente, eu estudo... É antes de, é, de apresentar uma aula, né? Obviamente, sou advogada, estudo, mas o que eu quero dizer é que eu não posso aqui... É, seria temerário eu me apresentar como especialista em todas as, as, 
em, em todas as especialidades do direito para vocês. Mas sim, perjury, uh, existe perjury in, uh, within the U.S. legal system. Yes. And it is a big deal. <laughs> it is not a small deal. It is a big, big deal. Um, so, guys, I guess that's it for today. Uh, next week, we'll see contracts. We'll examine contracts. Okay? Thank you so much. And um, at the end of, uh, of next class, we will have a special uh, a gift from um, Speak Legal for you guys. Okay, I am not sure it hasn't been determined yet. The specifics have not been determined yet, but I will let you know by the end of next class. Okay, bye guys. Thank you. You are very welcome, bye. <laughs>